Here we go. Sorry for that. Okay, here we go. So now we are all all there. And Johannes comes back from the BioPlus as well. Okay, cool. Um, so we are on the panel now. Um, I think I, the first question I would like to clarify what uh, Valentin was um, showing. Or was it Valentin? I don't know. But someone showed like, that Scopio inspect, no, it was Valentin. So Scopio inspect uh, just reaches out to the registry, pulls down the manifest, and then is able to inspect it without downloading it, right? And I would think, um, I think that the, it doesn't work with Docker inspect because Docker inspect just um, works on the local content store, right? So you cannot really inspect registries with Docker, right? Phil, I think, is it, is it right? That is right. I also see Phil. <laughs> He's nodding. So Phil nodding. Um, and Portman, Portman behaves this, the same way. Okay, but is it? Would it be wise to have it reached out to the registry? I mean, you said they don't want to uh, include another command, but uh, I think when you work on the local content store, that's kind of expected behavior, right? On the local one, yes. Um, I I believe there's a there's quite some need for remote inspection without pulling everything down. Yeah. Basically, this is why why Scopio exists in the first place. But also seeing, um, especially in ARM, um, there are so many different different architectures, and even if you run a Raspberry Pi, um, quite often it's not trivial to find which ARM image is the right one for for your node. And remote inspection just makes makes lives easier because you can see the full manifest list, inspect which, or if there's an image for the specific variant of your architecture, and then then pull the right one, because um, the auto detection might use ARM64 while you need a specific variant of it that the manifest matching uh, logic would not pull. But being devil's advocate here again, I mean, for a manifest list, you actually inspect without pulling everything down, right? You download the manifest list, the Docker engine or the, the, the Docker runtime will inspect the manifest list and then pull down the actual image that is defined by the correct platform object that is also the platform object that matches the local platform object, right? So you kind of inspect the manifest list at runtime and then download the full image of the version that you actually need. That is that is right, but it doesn't always work for all ARM platforms. Um, ARM uh, ARM is getting better, um, but it's a pretty pretty big mess when it comes to the different variants and platforms. So the the matching might not always work in all circumstances. Another another example where I was pretty happy about a remote inspection was an issue we recently had. So we have this containers image library where we implement all the image handling logic and all the different transports that Scopio is using. So if in, in some ways, Scopio is a, a wrapper around the containers image library. And um, last year in, in autumn, um, we somehow made our sanity checks when pulling an image stricter so we somehow tightened uh, a little bit the matching algorithm algorithm when it comes to exactly that the os and the architecture and while doing that we discovered quite a lot of images even the Kuber the official kubernetes pause image um, was broken for non-amd64 architectures because all of them claimed to be um, the configs claimed to be of AMD64. So the manifest was um, correct. It was specifying or pretending to be an ARM64 image, but when you were pulling it down and validating or sanity checking the config, the configs all pointed to AMD64. And um, the remote inspection was pretty helpful there because Scopio allows also to inspect the config not only the manifest, but also the config, which can be uh, a pretty nice tool to figure out what's actually going on because container engines um, may be Potman or 
ContainerD or Docker or Cryo, all, all these engines might reject it um, with a reason, but you don't get to read the config because it will, will be deleted beforehand. So do you have anything to add there? It's my favorite topic. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I think, um, yeah, Valentin covered a lot of the, the key issues, um, you know, especially as we get into artifacts and other media types being stored. I think user tools that allow us to poke around talking to a registry without necessarily doing a traditional image poll are going to be more important. And I think uh, Oroz was mentioned, um, I think, in the Singularity talk. And that library is built on top of Container D's um, registry interaction code base. Um, and I've just recently switched Manifest tool to use that library. Um, and so uh, all that I'm adding, I think, is that in general, um, I think tools are going to spring up that allow more kind of uh, end user interaction with a with a registry without uh, this traditional pull model of uh, I pull the entire image and now I poke around. So, so yeah, I think we're moving that direction uh, with end user tools and libraries like container slash image or the container D resolver. Uh, so yeah, I, I see more tools probably coming in that area. Oroz is actually being contributed to the OCI and is under vote right now. So um, I think more people will will start to use libraries like that to uh, do interesting interactions that aren't again traditionally image based. Can you double click on Oroz? I think we discussed it briefly yesterday, but um, just so that everyone knows what Oroz is, it's for Helm shots and CNAP as well, right? Yeah, so it aligns with, uh, so I mentioned in my talk, and I think Ian mentioned in his talk, um, this idea of the artifacts. Uh, it's hard for us to call it a spec yet in the OCI. It's, it's, it's almost like more a repository of other media types that we actually want to register in the official IANA model of registering a media type and then having in the artifacts repository uh, a definition. What is what is this singularity image format? Uh, if I'm implementing a new registry, what should I know about it? Uh, if, what are Helm charts? What's the media official media type? What do they look like? Again, if I'm implementing a, a registry, how would I? What should I know as I implement support for Helm charts? So that work in the OCI um, is sort of more specification based. Oroz is a nice library that sort of gives you a starting point to interact with artifacts that could be images, could be the OCI v1 image spec, uh, but also all these other uh, newer types that people want to store in registries. And so Oroz has a small kind of uh, end user component just to try it out, but I would say it's more, its bigger impact will be as a library that other people will build tools around uh, for interacting with registries. And so can I implement the manifest list in Oras then? Because I mean, we, we, we have the manifest list with only a very limited platform object that only specifies AMD. And as Valentin says, a couple of ARM variants, but, and there used to be a feature uh, component there as well, like a feature flag where you could have arbitrary list of strings and your manifest list uh, supports this feature flag still. So thanks for that, by the way. Um, but <laughs> can we, create a manifest list that maybe uses arch spec to specify exactly what platform the image is used or built for and what uh, what we what we should um, use it for or maybe also like to make findability easier so like the uh, Johannes and Björn talked about so like to specify I need matplotlib at least version three so can you please find me an image for for that one and just just thinking out loud because I just learned about ORAS basically. Yeah, so I, I think there are, there are two aspects to your question. One is ORAS and the Artifacts Project definitely allow for experimentation outside of sort of the, the heritage, you know, Docker image format, uh, now OCI v1 image spec. 
the image spec dropped features, and I I can't remember all the the discussion that went into that, uh, but definitely we could try out a new media type that adds back in that and other capabilities like what you're talking about or findability, and at least with artifacts and auras and and uh, the tools around that, um, it gives us a, a playground of sorts to try out new things. The I think the second part of that is we don't really want to stray, at least if we're talking about OCI image spec, we don't, we don't want to stray beyond uh, very far before we try and convince the overall community this is a necessary and sufficient feature that we actually want in the image spec because here's the use cases it enables. So, um, yeah, I think artifacts both will enable more experimentation around media types and, and content that we store in registries. But when it comes back to container images as we know them, I think uh, some of that may be a loop back through the standardization process to say, hey, features or this other way of marking and tagging content are also really critical for the HPC use case. And, you know, let's have that discussion. Cool. I think like Todd is on the panel, but he's quiet. I think he would have an, an opinion as well, or Kenneth or Jane or Andrew. So guys, if you want to chime in, or maybe, I mean, Johannes, I think you, you maybe you have not thought about Auras yet as an artifact thing, but that could be something that we can explore for like findability as well. Absolutely, mm -hmm. sounds, sounds like an interesting opportunity, yes. Okay, anyone with another step at this and maybe while we are at OCI image spec and ORAS and we talked about it already um, but what is missing there like as like as I said manifest list might be a little bit more extensible Valentin talked about annotations for second rules that might be part of the OCI image spec then or what is what is missing or maybe requirements for OCI hooks can we put this into into an image as well is it does it make sense I guess we can put all kinds of metadata into into images. I mean, we have uh, annotations and labels, um, but if we use them, they will they will be a convention rather than part of the spec. I believe if there's a problem that is can be generalized enough, then it has a good chance to get into um, the the image spec. So with respect to the, the second profile, so at the moment we're, we're still playing, playing with the idea and want to come up with a, with a decent proof of concept and, and first in, in, in Portman to show it's working. And then we can, um, or we'll try to, to get that into the spec if it works out and makes sense. Okay. Any other comments on that one? Otherwise, we had this um, like not so simple poll with um, reproducibility, and uh, I think people just said, I, "I have a more or less, I have a working way of uh, like making sure that reproducibility works. A reproducibility can be can be done, but um, not really." So. I mean, it, it also comes to findability, right? Like first is finding an image that I that I want to to um, to run to run again, maybe like using the SHA 260 or 256 hash, or having weird uh, ways of of naming an image, like using text that can be reproduced or that that can be figured out beforehand. And I think uh, Bjorn and, and Johannes, you you touched on, or did you touch on how? Bio containers can be found by using a defined hashing mechanism to find certain versions of images. You want to start, Bjorn? Okay, I can also like yeah, it's kind of like the same the same um, the same thing. 
So you could either have an API for finding an image with a required software, or you could uh, first calculate a hash and then find an image by the hash and name. The, the difference is that uh, the API allows for more flexibility and especially fuzzy search. And imagine that like already, if you have just five packages and they have all certain versions, it's, it's highly unlikely that you, when you write down what software you need match by just by chance, something that somebody else uh, has already built and uploaded to one of those registries. So it would be really nice to have a, have a fuzzy way of finding if there's something matching. It would like vastly reduce the amount of images uploaded from the data science community. Because like in the end, people do very, very similar things, but it's just a combinatorial explosion if, if everybody just builds his own image from like just the point in time when when he decided which software to need uh, which, which software he needs so yeah something that makes it easy to find these images would be great like in a fuzzy way or maybe have everyone reuse the same layer so that even though we have a new manifest list we still just reuse all the layers so if we Yes, that's part of part of it, right? So when you build the image, especially when you automatically build images from uh, from package uh, management uh, tools like Conda or or uh, Nix or whatever, all the packages could be stored in a separate layer. And then when you have a package that depends on something where you already have layer from from, you can reduce the storage, right? When when uploading the new image, absolutely, it's connected. So, but still you will have several versions of the same layer for different versions of the software. So it's still important to have a way of fuzzy searching for, for images. And I think it's a general benefit, not only for data science, because it would make containers more transparent. If you would have metadata that gives you an information about what is actually meant to be in the container available as software packages and not just having the Docker file for knowing what is in the container, what's installed in it. I guess there are lots of other applications of, of such an API uh, apart from data science. Andrew, Andrew has something to say as well. And Bjorn, you are muted, by the way. So we all tout how containers are great with reproducibility, and in many ways they are. Recently, sort of, if I put my, you know, researcher hat on, uh, we're starting to look at, you know, software or hardware artifacts being associated directly with, say, a paper that we submit. You know, a grad student writes some new code, makes a container on it, and maybe they add it to their paper or something like that. And that actually is really great, but I think we need to do better. You know, what, what we do in the academic community is we have these DOIs that get associated with the paper and it creates an immutable artifact, right? And it's that immutability that's really, really important. Now, we have some of that with containers, right? But, you know, as, as we talked a little bit about in the chat, and I think, you know, Eduardo mentioned, we use latest too, too much, right? So it'd be nice if we had a way, and maybe there is, and I don't know about it, and I need to, but it'd be nice to associate a DOI with a container image directly. And maybe we should not be using tags, but hashes, I don't know what the right answer is, but what I'd like to see is for me to be able to pick up a paper, read it and be like, oh, hey, I can get their container image. And I just need that DOI reference that's in the paper or associated with it. We could tie this with ACM badging. I really think this would move forward reproducibility. I'm curious to see if the rest of the committee has any thoughts on this or something we can do. Can you educate us from the old world what a DOI is? Well, I, let's see if I even remember the it's document object identifier, I think. Um, it, think of it as a URL that doesn't change, right? The, the immutability of it is sort of the key aspect here. Okay. So I, I think there's some work um, that's going around with the Notary V2, what they're looking at is, uh, I remember they're looking at in terms of like attaching a software bill of materials to a particular image or a particular tag. Um, but of course the, the, the motivation there is more on verifying that the image meets certain properties rather than, um, you know, reproducibility and findability. 
but it's something that they're looking at in terms of being able to attach to the metadata to images, but this will currently uh, sit on the signature level. Uh, but it seems like this metadata is also going to be useful even on the image level. But that would also mean that the registries have a better way of searching for things, or not better way, but I mean, in a manifest list, you, you only consolidate or like put similar images just for different platforms. And if you would have like a manifest list or like a manifest that introduces this information, then you, you also want to, to be able to search for this, right? So there's some front end work to be done as well. Well, I, I want to introduce a complexity to what Andrew is saying is, how would you warranty reproducibility to that DOI on a, like a CPU level? Like in the chat right now, Todd and Kenneth are like battling about CPU labeling and things like that. Like, let's say I do my paper uh, with a x86, right? And I publish my paper and I publish that container. How can that DOI metadata include that this container will only run on Intel, Haswell, whatever, right? Do not try on power. Like, should I do that? Because so, that is going to break. Great question. And I can tell you what we do today and why it's not a good solution. What we do today, for instance, for maybe the SC conference, we ask, you know, we ask for specific details. What, not what could this container image run on, but what did you execute whatever code it is, whether it's in a container or not, right? So tell me the operating system, tell me what versions of compilers you've used, and, and the authors have to specify this. We also have a nice little script in our author kit that they can go run and it'll collect environment output and whatnot and associate that. And that is useful, but you're right. We could do a whole lot better uh, than, than just some random script that <laughs> I may or may not have written with, with somebody else a while back. So, uh, it, it, yeah, that is an issue. Um, and but again, the idea is not that it has to be perfect reproducibility, but it has to be easily indexed, findable, and immutable, right? But if you, so, I mean, if you would publish the, the SHA hash so that you can find the exact image, and you publish the R expect output that you know exactly where it was running on, and maybe even the bill of materials or Docker file or whatever recipe, so that you can attempt to reproduce it, even though it's maybe not the exact same image, but you 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 can like maybe run it on a different different system, and if you get the same output, then it's fine, right? I mean, you don't need maybe you don't need the exact image, but and maybe I'm not researcher enough for this now, but yes. if yeah, I, I can see what you just of... described. Yeah, if you do what you just described, you would get a good or great rating for your ADA submission to ISC, by the way. So, um, you know, most kind of fall fall short of that. But yeah, I think you're right. If you if you put an associated DOL with the SHA, that's that should really capture what we're what you're after. Um, there could be other ways, but that's one way. Yeah, what I see the other way of what Christian just said is like think on a Monte Carlo paper. Like just using a different CPU can massively change your Monte Carlo results, right? Because of how the CPU is processing the random mess and things like that. So, but if you put, yeah, it, but if if your results depend on something like that, like if randomization depends on CPU, then it's not properly randomized, or the data is not like the results are not robust enough. So one should so, always question whether like pure reproducibility on exactly the same machine is then leading to a good result in the sense of that it's really sustainable and, and scientifically correct. This It might be even a feature that like it does not always run exactly the same, but still qualitatively the results are the same. So one needs to be careful about yeah. like reproducing by every bit in like uh, in, in yes. the computations. What yeah, I, I think when I mentioned level reproducibility, yeah, yeah I, I don't think we care about bitwise reproducibility. It's not really feasible, but there is so much more that we could and should be doing in the computer science community to enable, let, let's just call it transparency, right? I should be able to download some image and have an idea of what is in it and how you ran it and what 
what what software is there, right? Um, that that gives some future author, some future grad student who's trying to recreate my paper five years from now, a whole lot more than they would just reading the paper, right? And so what I'm trying to hope, or what I would like to see, is for ISC 21. Somebody could write a cool paper about their cool science experiment and they used containers and be able to associate associate that container in an immutable way with with their paper. I, I think that would really enhance, forget bitwise reproducibility, but if we were able to enable this and in, in a better way than we do now, or at least streamline that process, I think we would we would really provide a value add towards you know the overall scientific community. So just as a quick comment, so in like in workflow management system, this this is kind of done already. Like for example, Snakemake allows you to um, create an archive out of a workflow, which may 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 use containers or conda packages, and then this archive can be uploaded to a service like Zenodo, where you get a DOI, so it's immutable, and you can like just reproduce the entire analysis. So not on a container level, but on a workflow system level, which might use containers. So in that sense, mm -hmm. it's kind of solved so on a higher level. And that's exactly what we've been. I mean, I can do a Docker export, right? And then put it into a Zenodo uh, repo and, and create a DUI from that. If there was a way that we should, if that's the right way, which is pretty manual, um, then we should streamline on that. If there's something that we could specifically do within image registries and automate that, that yeah, that would be even better. Cool. better be also because it's like not wasting resources then because on Zenodo, like you have like duplications for all these like but but they like, like boxes, right? I, I, I'm I'm not a like DOI person, but I would think that exporting a workflow that includes all the um, all the, the containers hampers a little bit on like how you can find how images are used. Wouldn't it be better to have a DOI of DOIs of different artifacts so that you can say <laughs> Who yes, used this DOI, this exec who has referenced that? Yeah, or you would just exactly. reuse the DOI because the DOI is meant to be a kind of a durable, a durable entity, right? Um, it even allows you for to do versions and updates to it. I think in, in most cases, um, explicitly, right? You know, so it's not the la the previous information is not lost. Cool. Um, okay, DOIs. Can we can we tick the box of DOIs um, and maybe move on to notary or like trust? Do we? Is it? Is it? DOI? I'd love to mention uh, one thing before in respect or in yeah. context of reproducibility. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, um, but I dropped a link in in the chat and. Um, one issue that was mentioned is, especially for research, I have my paper, I have a container that allows for rerunning uh, the experiments, but um, I want to make sure that people who want to reproduce the results use the exact same commands. And one thing or one issue of the image spec is that it looks more to the inside of the container rather than the outside of the container. So many things, uh, for instance, volumes, um, security um, attributes, maybe of armor profiles, as Linux labels, SECOM filters, all these things uh, that relate to how an image should be executed um, are not always covered by the image spec. So um, we came up with a command, Potman container run label, where we're yet another time exploiting annotations or labels of an image. So um, you can specify a label in the image and the value of it, so it's basically key, key value um, mapping. The value of the image is the command that will be executed. So it's a uh, powerful yet dangerous. You should only do this if you really trust the image um, because you shouldn't just run container run label of a random image from the web which will execute uh, commands on your on your node in worst case as root. But for those and similar issues um, we found this to be a quite powerful means 
So the cool thing about this is, somehow I'm repeating myself, is that we lift an image to describing how it wants to be executed on the node, not only how it can be executed, which um, the image spec roughly specifies. So in, in summary, the run label allows for executing a command on the host, which is specified in the value of the label that you want to run. Ideally, this is the container engine that is executing it. Um, but it could also be um, any other set in theory of commands you want to execute. So it could embed an entire bash script if you wanted to, uh, which could be interesting for um, um, initializations of certain nodes, things like this, set up scripts, um, especially in HPC, um, many execute or the execution of containers also depends a lot on what the host offers and this could be a way to somehow automate these tasks but do we want this to be part of the image or isn't it more something that the orchestrator or the supervisor should do um well if it's it it always depends on the use case so i would i would answer with yes or no um assuming the orchestrator will live forever um, this might work, but when it comes to reproducibility um, that spans across the immediate bubble of the image vendor um, or the researcher, um, then run label can be, I believe, a, a, a good means to achieve reproducibility. But I mean, then you just, and I'm just thinking out loud, but shouldn't you then use a higher level reproducible artifact like a uh, Snake make next flow, whatever Kubernetes, like orchestration artifact rather than an image artifact. And I'm devil's advocate here, so maybe just. Uh... Oh, I think it uh, it always depends on what what you want to do um, and the means that you have. Um, I I don't have a Kubernetes cluster running locally on my machine, and I probably can't because it's not powerful enough. Um, but sure, um, it, it depends. If you have a Kubernetes YAML, um, you might be might be able to run your deployments this way. I don't know Kubernetes YAML enough to to know the the limits of that. But I, I know the the image spec enough to know that there are are limits of what you what you can do and specify. So it, it basically reduces manually or manual work, usually you go to, I don't know, Docker Hub or Quay, you read the instructions of how the image vendors intended uh, the image to be executed. Sometimes it needs uh, to be executed as a privileged container. Um, all these things, um, you, re you, re you reduce all this manual work yeah. and error proneness by putting it into, into the run label. I'm not saying it's the it's the solution for everything or in general a solution for reproducibility, but in some cases it might be. Yeah. Okay. So there, yeah. Colin, the, yeah, Kristen. So there's one other thing I wanted to add to what Valentin was was saying, which is the concept of reproducibility with containers, in my opinion, is is kind of a misnomer because we can guarantee the reproducible state of the container environment. We can guarantee um, that we know what it is, we, it could be trusted, it could be signed, and you can have you know, immutability and validation of that container, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna run in the same way wherever you wanna bring it, right? There are host factors uh, that Valentin is expressing, that, that Eduardo expressed and, and, um, and others. And I think it's really important to, to clarify when we're talking about reproducibility, we're not talking about the fact that we're confident we're going to get the same answer. We're confident of the fact that the environment that we're running is trusted. We know what's inside of it. And um, I just wanted to put that out there because there's a lot of confusion, I think, in terms of what containers and reproducibility actually gets you. I, I think in my mind, what we're, what we're aiming for is just the most basic level of like, can somebody else go and take your workflow and have a chance of re-executing it? You know, yes, there may be differences that oh, being able to just make it work. 
we lost yeah. you for there just a second chain but uh, i think the gist yeah. of what you said is we we completely agree yeah <laughs> yeah i think we are we we don't need to shoot for the stars for the first iteration i guess it's like it's uh, baby steps towards uh, perfect 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 world all right are there other comments Otherwise, I would like to, I mean, and we have like maybe five to 10 minutes left and then we will have a bio break to uh, get everyone uh, ready for the next segment. But I think what, what's also worth touching on is what we mean when we talk about distribution. I mean, it's either distribution from a public registry to a private registry maybe, or distribution directly from a public registry to a runtime, which would be the Docker case, I guess, fair to say. Or do we want to make sure that we like distribute it from a registry to a cluster file system. So have a snapshot that is maybe um, SIF or that's Saros images or whatever else. And how do we, how do we make sure that we um, have the same image and that we can trust the transportation between those registries? I remember from my Docker days that there is this um, global unified domain name, this, this, what is it called? Um, when you have like a registry in front of your repository and image name, this is like the global name and the signature is always according to this global name. So you cannot just move an image from one registry to the other one because the, what was the name? Like the global name changes? Yeah, it was like uh, the, the gun and then it was the like gun, the gun. Global marker. unique name, something like that. Yeah. So, and, and it's hard to, to move the signature of the image from one registry to the other because it depends depends on the gun, right? Yep. And like, what are we talking here about? Are we, are we talking about distribution between registries? Are we talking about distribution between registries and snapshot stores, if I may say so, for like Saros or SIF images that you put on this local file system in your home directory, maybe? So, um, in terms of at least signing, I know the, the discussions around Notary V2 was one of it was exactly that, that issue. I mean, it's kind of like a double-edged sword where, um, yes, it restricts itself to a single registry, but then now if I'm distributing my images across multiple registries, my signatures are not really portable. Uh, and so um, the, the spec is still under discussion, but it seems to be um, the trend, uh, the thought is going towards um, being able to sign a particular um, content addressable image. So by looking at the hash of the image and then you can sign associations between versions and particular hashes of the image um, separately. Um, so the signing image would give you like a bill of materials. It would tell you what the software is running. Um, uh, what was the, the built pipeline, the built versions. Uh, and then you could have tags that you could also sign and say that this tag would um, point to this particular hash of an image. So that way, I think it, it, it takes away a, a little bit of the um, binding to a particular registry. So even if you, you're you doing, I, I, I saw the Scorpio thing, I thought it was really cool. You can just synchronize all the files for Ag app systems and that way you could still use it. But can you also use Scopio or if it's on the wish list maybe to like sync an image from a signed image from Docker Hub or whatever and then put it into a different format and still make sure that the signature is carried along and I'm like not a signing expert. Maybe that's not possible, but would it be then you need to trust Scopio, I guess, but is it something that you maybe can like have the same bill of materials and then say, okay, that's that's solid? Something like that. So the um, the identifier, at least for um, currently, the, the thought is that it's signing the manifest. Um, so as long as the manifest doesn't change um, throughout the copy process, uh, you can use the signature independently. So you don't you don't really have to regenerate the signature, as long as you make the signature available and then attach the public key, which key management itself is kind of a different topic, <laughs> uh, which also has its challenges. But uh, it, as long as the manifest isn't altered, I think it should be fine. Well, Christian, you were asking which which kinds of objects we, or distri distribution in general would cover. And 
Um, I feel that more and more, and I see an increasing demand from customers and users to copy all kinds of data, not only images uh, and basically the, the MIME types that are defined in the image spec, um, maybe the OCI one or the Docker one, but all, all kinds of data. And um, our, this is basically what artifact support as well, right? And I see it, um, I don't wanna say exploited, but used in very creative ways to, to copy all kinds of data from A to B. Some, cu some customers or users, they say, well, I already have a local registry running and this allows me to copy uh, my, my data, which may not be container layers, but um, metadata or um, other, other kinds of data, whatever they need from, from A to B. Um, we recently had the same or a similar issue use case in internally. I'm dropping another, another link here in the chat. Um, so this is a project that uh, Vincent Batz, Dan Walsh, uh, I and a couple of others have been working on. Um, this is a proof of concept that we use also internally um, to generate source container images. So we were working on the issue that um, in theory and also in practice, the, the GPL requires um, the source code that is used inside a container or of the binaries that are distributed inside a container to be available on the same registry. Um, so we created a tool that, that does that for RPMs and adds uh, more, more things on, on top. Um, this is also a project that ideally we want to get into the OCI, but um, currently we're we are uh, we first want to get some some experience and actually uh, to actually tell how this is working and how the problems that we've been facing and also to 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 wait for for artifacts. Um, but this was a similar a, a similar issue of all kinds of data that might be transported in a container. So now we use to identify a source container image, we do it by convention, namely by a dash source um, suffix of the tag of the container. So at the moment, it looks like a container. It maybe quacks like a container, but it is not a container. So uh, artifacts could be uh, could be a great great way to find conventions for this, and this is what I really really love about artifacts because I don't I think that I mentioned a couple of times also with respect to to uh, runtime hooks that um, not all things may need or can be part of a specification, but um, here the, the the artifacts can help to find conventions and agree on something in the larger community. Yeah. True, yeah, but let's not open the can of worms of uh, source images and lawyers and because we get close to lawyers again, right? So that's uh, that's kind of dangerous. Um, <laughs> I only know very good lawyers and yeah. very yeah. gentle ones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at least at Red Hat. <laughs> Maybe we're yeah. blessed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, cool. So let's. Maybe let's conclude. Like any closing thought? I think for me, like the 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 biggest takeaway is that I want to like torture Oras and try to get my ideal manifest list piece in Oras maybe. That's maybe just me. Um, any other closing thought and waiting for notary v2, I guess it's also something. So we should pressure the all the registries to do what we want them to do. Like put arch spec in something in Oras maybe. The manifest list 2.0. Okay, silence. No closing thought. Everything is set. Everything is set. All right. Then I'd say we like I put the music on um, for like ten minutes, and then we will meet back at uh, yeah at the top of the hour and uh, have the second, even uh, more scintillating segment. But this was also great. It was awesome. Okay, thanks guys. Um, see you later. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks.